You're listening to Real Estate for Real People, hosted by the Stone Sisters. The Stone Sisters have built an award-winning realty business, and they're here to share some of their knowledge with you. A new episode drops every Thursday. If you enjoy the show, please share it with a friend and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And visit www.stonesisters.com for more information just like this. So we are talking today about market predictions. You know, there's been so much speculation on this market across, you know, across Canada. Mm -hmm. um, the market has done exceptionally well and everybody's wondering, okay, so can is, this last? Can this last? Is the, you know, is the ceiling going to fall? Is it, are we done? Like, mm -hmm. should we be, you know, what's happening? And mm -hmm. so we thought we'd just talk about that. You know, what yep. are we seeing in the marketplace? Yeah. And uh, so Tamara, are we going to see a crash? Boom. Yeah. <laughs> no, has the bubble burst? Is it, I mean, you read these headlines and it drives me crazy because if, if you believed all the headlines, the market would have crashed in 2008 and again in 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like everybody's always sort of predicting it. And I, you know, I think in essence, it comes down to supply and demand. I mean, that's Always. the basic economics. That's what fuels everything. And, you know, I, I look at it and say, okay, can this, can this frantic frenzy continue? I, I think, I mean, we're seeing it already. It is yeah. calming. It's, it's not nearly as, as frenzied a market now on October 27th, as it was say in May or June, it's still incredibly active. And my prediction is that we are going to continue to see growth and, and strength in numbers mm -hmm. because of so many people choosing to move here. Well, and as well too, you know, things have quietened down slightly. And I say that very slightly. We, we had a um, multiple offer situation just yesterday as well. So it's, it, it has cooled, um, or quietened it, I guess. It cools yeah. isn't probably the right word, but it's also because we don't have the inventory. No. We're, so, we're what? Down 60, 65% of where we typically would be in, in, in a normal market. Sale. And that's, you know, that's taking into account single family, townhouses, condos, you know, that's a, a broad sense of it. But when you look at it, we are down, you know, in all those segments of the market in our inventory. So mm -hmm. we have less sales, you know, when we look at the sales, because I think there was, you know, was it, um, Canada um, real estate, what was it? Someone predicted that the market was going to drop dramatically. Oh, the CMHC. Sales, CMHC, when, yeah. there we go. Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation back, you know, in May of 2019, or pardon me, 2020, right after COVID hit. Yeah. And yeah, they predicted that values across the country would drop what was it? 18 to 38%. Mm -hmm. And you know, in reality, our, our housing prices here are up what 40%. Mm -hmm. You know, you were saying yesterday that how much are big white prices up? Oh, they're going up every week, probably yeah. a few percentages every week. So, <sighs> you know, there was a property that actually had sold just to break into this, just to give an example, but there was a property that sold last year for five fifty. Mm -hmm. nice, um, one of the town houses up there. And, and big white, for those of you who don't know, that's our ski hill located about 45 minutes away mm -hmm. and phenomenal champagne powder. It's a, it's a great hill. It is a great family friendly hill. And so 550 and that just came on the market, just sold for 750, 12 wow. months later. Wow. And they didn't do any changes to that. Wow. So, and th to me, that's so interesting is one, that buyer would have known likely if they'd done their research, which I'm sure they, they would have, mm -hmm. that that property sold a year ago for 550. Mm -hmm. They were still comfortable in this market to go ahead and pay $200,000 more when nothing had been done, mm -hmm. but they still felt that comfortable in the marketplace of where prices have gone. So that to me is interesting, the mindset of buyers. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, that's why we won't see you know, a, a huge shift in the overall market. We won't see, you know, with some predictions of, you know, prices coming down dramatically. We may see fewer sales. Mm -hmm. And actually the uh, Canadian Real Estate Association is predicting that we will see fewer sales nationally across the board for next year. So for 2022, um, I think they're saying about 12% less sales, yep. but because we just don't have the inventory and that's all across Canada. Well, and the, look at us. I mean, we're, we, you know, we've been doing this a long time here. We've lived here our whole lives and, and we're, we're doing a lot of evaluations. So a CMA or a competitive market, comparative market analysis is where we'll come and say to somebody, okay, based on what's for sale based on what's sold and the overall market conditions, your home is worth X amount of money. People go, that's wonderful. We'd love to sell. Now we just need you to find us something to go to. And that's the challenge. We, mm -hmm. we, I mean, how many people have we got in our back pockets who, who are, are considering selling, who would sell, but it's all dependent upon where they're going to go. And there just isn't that, that supply. There isn't that the inventory out there. No. So 
you know, you wonder if we're going to start seeing many trades happen just because people will maybe find a property and they can trade Mm -hmm. back and forth and we can help facilitate those. You know, I just, it, it's tricky. It's a, it's a different, Mm -hmm. a different market in that. And that's, you know, it is, as you said, you started this right off in the beginning, it's supply and demand Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we just don't have the supply. So that demand is always going to be greater. Yeah. Well, and if you listen to our talk with, with our mayor, um, Colin Bazran, we, we just did a, a discussion with him talking about, you know, what, what does the city of Kelowna foresee and what's their 20 year plan mm-hmm. and, and what's coming. And they really want to stop like they're doing in a lot of cities. They really want to stop the urban sprawl and they are allowing the city council and, and, you know, our, our municipal, um, council government is is wanting you know they're allowing to to have the developments that were already approved to to continue and to build out as as per their plan so that's, that's well the single then. family single developments family. yeah and but they really don't want new development they they don't want to see further you know encroachment out to the hills and and you know the land that's you know we're we're fairly landlocked here just mm-hmm. we've got a lot of land that's on the mountains that's in the agriculture land reserve yeah we've got a big lake going right down through the city of our of our you know valley here and and they don't want to they don't want to have it sprawl out so they're really trying to do things to encourage uh, densifying and mm-hmm. you know all houses as you just alluded to all houses can you can put a suite in in the basement mm-hmm. um you know there without having to get rezoned uh, laneway houses if you're in one of the core areas yeah. you know carriage homes they call them or a laneway house so really trying to to densify of course, we're seeing a ton of new, you know, apartment style condos. Condo developments. And they're selling out and selling out quickly. And so, you know, the city, it's funny, three years ago when we started to hear that some of these developments were going to be coming and we all thought, oh, okay, we're going to see, you know, an overabundance of condos. Yeah. And so, you know, everybody was sort of speculating that that's what we would see. That the market would be flooded. And that's yeah. projects like One Water Street and, mm-hmm. you know, let's rattle off a few of the names because people will have heard those, but... Aqua was a big Aqua. one. Mission Cab- Group's Aqua. Cabana now that that's mm-hmm. come back through, through from Cressy Developments mm-hmm. and Movala, we've got that mm-hmm. one. So all of these developments that were coming down and we thought, oh, okay. So those developments came, they launched and they just launched recently. Yeah. They've all sold out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's 150, 200, 250 units gone, you know, snapped up in hours in some cases and, uh, you know, a couple weeks in, in others. And what's interesting I find is the assignment fee. So typically when somebody in the past has bought a condo develop, you know, condo pre-sale, so it's not built yet and they buy it in speculation and they think, well, I'm going to, I'm going to flip this essentially and resell my contract before it completes so that that person never has to actually put a mortgage on it. They never have to pay for the whole thing. They just put their deposit. They down. don't have to pay property transfer tax and they just hold it with their deposit. What the change is, is those assignment fees now and those from those developments are actually pretty high. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really make sense for people to be buying the same speculation that they were unless they really feel that the prices are going to be astronomically increased. So what's interesting is we're not seeing that speculation of people buying, thinking, okay, I'm just going to buy this and flip it and and I can't actually afford to complete on it. Mm -hmm. People are buying them Mm -hmm. to hold them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're buying and they might sell them once they've completed on them, but their plans for the most part are actually to complete, move forward. You know, either they're renting them out and adding that and helping with our rental um, market here, Mm -hmm. um, or they are going to be living in them themselves. Or in some cases, they are turning around and reselling them. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, something we've had a few people doing, you know, a building that's just recently had, had occupancy granted is One Water Street. Yes. And lots of people purchase those with the intent to move here or have their university age kids yep. move in or, or what have you. They stuck with their commitment, of course, to purchase the unit, paid the 5% GST, then they've relisted the property. Things have changed. The market has appreciated to the point it, it makes sense to sell. And GST is applicable again because it's nobody's lived in it. Mm-hmm. So just something to be aware of mm-hmm. when, when we it's talk about those. It's very interesting. And, and what's fascinating about the condo market is when we look at our inventory in condos from, you know, where we're sitting at today versus this time last year. And it's good to compare last year because we were in still an active market. You know, when we were looking back and comparing year over year when we were in May, we couldn't do that really because we, it was right in the thick of COVID the year prior. So it wasn't great for comparison. You know, last year at this time, the market had already started to really increase. It was a very healthy, active seller's market. Yeah. So when we look at that, our inventory in the condo segment, this same segment that we thought that would be flooded, flooded, um, the inventory is down 61%. 
And yeah. that's on MLS. So that's where we can we can get our data from. You right. know, that doesn't include all of those other properties New that developments came, that, that sell off market. That yeah. sell off they market. don't hit the MLS system. And those numbers are not counted. Not when those the real numbers aren't counted. Puts out the statistics. So when we look, our sales are down in condos year over year, 5%, not taking into account all of these buildings that have sold out. Mm-hmm. You know, probably, mm-hmm. I don't know, how many units do you think would you guess? Oh, in 800. Total? I I would say we're over the last three months, I would say that 800 condos have come to market and sold off market, you know, off market, not included in these numbers. Yeah. Not on the MLS. And those that are still on MLS, they're selling 45% faster than they were this time Mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our condo is the way to go. Is, Is that a good investment? Well, I think, you know, for some people, I mean, I I would never tell someone to just buy anything, hurry, get in, prices are going to skyrocket. You know, that's not our style. We don't do that. However, you know, I think when we get people who say, okay, well, I want to buy in Kelowna. I'm coming from Vancouver. I couldn't afford a house there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to buy the perfect family home in Kelowna. And, you know, if they started looking in January and now we're end of October, that house that perhaps in January you could have found something for 750, 800,000. You're closer to a million now. That, that's how much yes. things have changed. So, you know, what I, what my advice is to people is, okay, well, maybe, maybe you don't have to find your perfect forever house. Maybe, yes. maybe Great instead point. of putting all your eggs in one basket and, and maxing yourself out to, to be stretched so thin, you can only afford to eat craft dinner. Um, yeah. maybe, maybe lower your expectations a little bit, maybe get an older home, maybe find a home with a suite or something you can put a suite into. Maybe you get a town home. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I actually think a town home is a really viable, really good option for people out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you typically get a, your own garage or, or carport or what have you. In many cases, you have your own small fenced yard and you've, you've still got the space, you know, you're 16 to 2,600 square feet. So that's, that's a comfortable space, whether you're a, an individual, a couple or a family. Mm-hmm. And, and there are still some good opportunities out there. So I, my advice would be, I think you are smart to get your foot in the door and get in the market. Mm-hmm. Because when we look at some of the underlying factors, um, as COVID recedes, let's hope it's receding. As COVID recedes, I really believe we're going to see far more immigration coming to our country. And a lot of people, whether they are in, Mm -hmm. you know, overseas, in England, in in China, in India, people are looking at Canada as a very safe, very secure place to invest their dollars and and to to immigrate to. Absolutely. And a lot of those people, you know, will somebody from from, Denmark choose to move directly to Kelowna? Probably not. You know, some do if they've got family or a community mm-hmm. here. But th- people tend to immigrate to Montreal, Toronto, mm-hmm. Vancouver. Those are the big centers. And But people in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver know about the Okanagan. And I think that's what's fueling everything. It, everything. That's, You're right. It's, it's the immigration of people coming in. And some people, you know, some people are choosing to travel now. Lots of people aren't quite there yet but they will be. Mm-hmm. And, and I do firmly, firmly believe that we are going to continue to see Kelowna expand. Mm-hmm. What did I they agree. decide with the official community plan? How many more people are coming? So they thinking 50,000 more people by 2040. So that uh, mm-hmm. official community plan, that's a plan the city puts in place. Um, they do it every sort of couple of years and they reevaluate it and they put that in place. And that's sort of like a, a guideline, almost a business plan, I guess you could say for the city of Kelowna to follow and sort of their guide, their all of their practices or what have you kind of go back to that. So they predict that in 2014, and that's their plan, so they are going to try to build the infrastructure and everything by 2040 for those 50,000 people. Now, they started this plan quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at it, they started looking at this pre-COVID. And I think now, you know, even the mayor said, he said, you know, we weren't planning, of course, on COVID, and we're seeing that number is going to be probably even higher than that. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, looking and, and talking about is townhome a good option? And I think, I think it's a really good option. Mm-hmm. Plus, when we look over at the market, you know, that's one segment where the inventory, you know, has decreased only 25% mm-hmm. from this time last year. So there might be a little bit more inventory there. Yep. There might be a little bit more opportunity. You know, uh, single family homes, that inventory is down 41% from where we were last year. So that's yeah. going to be a trickier market to get into. Yeah. Um, And I think you bring up a really good point. When you're moving here, you know, people often say, well, I want to find my forever house. And, you know, even if they're moving with their family or what have you, and they say, I'm going to live there for, you know, 10, 15 years. 
And when they're moving here first for the first time, it's great to back that up and say, you know, maybe buy something, get yourself on the market. Yeah. And then you wait a couple of years and you just, you know, the things have changed and we, yeah. you then move again and you can upgrade or, or move to a different area or, or what have you. Yeah. Um, I think the key is to just get into the market and what you can afford at that time. Yes. And I think with that much, you know, population growth, mm-hmm. I think there's a pretty good indicator that over a five year period, you're going to do quite well with whatever investment or whatever property you do decide to to purchase. And dad always used to say, um, our, our parents were both realtors here for, for a long time and, and still, you know, have involvement, I guess I'd say they, yep. they like to have involvement. If what dad's do you mean? Listening. He's, he's the president of Stone Sisters. <laughs> And, you know, they, uh, a rule of thumb, you know, a guideline that they gave that I know, you know, we both firmly believe in is you do make money in real estate when you buy. Yes, absolutely. I don't think, you know, I mean, when you sell, you're at the mercy of the market. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're a seller today in October of 2021, you're going to do extraordinarily well. And, but if you'd asked us a year and a half ago, we didn't know if you were going to, you know, if all the values yeah. would drop tremendously. And so when you sell, you are at the mercy of that market and you hope you sell when the market's really strong and good. And overall, you know, when you go right back to when they started keeping records and, and look at the mm-hmm. cost of living and the cost of housing and the cost of lumber, it continues on an upwards trajectory. Yes. Uh, I don't think this is a bubble. I don't think it's overinflated. But I do think it's important to do well when you buy and Absolutely. to make a, you know, try and pull yourself, uh, you know, step back a little. And that's why I believe you need a good realtor. Of course, it should be us. But but if you've got a relationship with someone good that you trust and like, someone to help you be logical and not get so caught up in the sense that you have to win or just get it at all costs. These are big decisions and you, yes. you do want to make a smart decision. You do want to feel at least like you're, you're making a, a sound investment that you'll happily live in for a long time, but, but that you're, you're really being smart about all of this. And aware that you may not live in that for a long time and be okay with, okay, I really want the house with the white picket fence and the pool and the view. And, you know, you can't get all of that at this, this time, mm-hmm. but work your way into that. I mean, mm-hmm. I think, you know, society has changed. It used to be, you know, how many of us grew up in the same house and we didn't move when we were kids. And yeah. nowadays, you know, they say on average people move in their adult life five or six times. Yeah. So, you, you know, just want to get on that property ladder. Truly you do. And, and work your yeah. way, your way through. Because so. once you're in, then as the market continues to grow, you know, if you got into the market a couple of years ago and bought, you know, as much as you could, which might've been a, a little one bedroom condo downtown or Glenmore Road mm-hmm. in Rutland or what have you, that's gone up. And so then you've got the equity in that you lived there it, yeah. it, you know, you had to pay your mortgage, you had to pay your strata fee and so on. But, but, you know, it went up in value, let's assume 150,000. Meanwhile, you were paying off your mortgage. So then you can sell that. Then you get into the townhome. Mm-hmm. Then you're in the townhome for a few years. You sell that, you get into a little house with a basement suite. And maybe you even live in the basement suite, rent out upstairs. Yeah, smart. And then flip it and you live upstairs and rent out downstairs. And it's just a way of ascending that that ladder, the real mm-hmm. estate ladder. I love that. That's mm-hmm. a great analogy because mm-hmm. that's sort of the best way to go, to go about that. Yeah. And you know, in these days in the current climate that we're in, interest rates are so cheap that mm-hmm. I think some people are skipping a few steps of that ladder. We had first time buyers this year, first time buyers this year bought a property for almost 3 million. They, they didn't buy a condo. They didn't buy a town yeah. home or a half duplex. They jumped right into a nearly $3 million home and they're, they're loving it. And, and it was within their means to, to do that. But most people don't do that. I mean, most people start with a condo, then yeah. jump into maybe a town home, or sometimes they're lucky enough to get into a townhouse first yeah. and then move slowly into a home or what have you. Well, but how many houses have you guys lived in? Oh, one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, actually. Yeah. So five already. Five you're, already. You're young. You probably got three or four Yeah, more. I'm only 20. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, I'm going <laughs> to... So let's go back to market predictions. I mean, the yep. Canadian um, Real Estate Association is predicting prices across Canada to go up about 5.6% mm-hmm. this next year. You know, inventory, as we said, is low all across Canada. I think to say that across Canada prices are going to go up th- by that amount is healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, are we, what do you see for Kelowna? What do you see for the Okanagan area? Uh, our average house price currently is what, 900 and. 
38,000 nine- for median. I think yeah. average is 990, I think. So yeah. I think that we will a year from now, if I had to predict, or if we were going to wager, um, I would say that we will see our average house price certainly over a million. My gut I feeling agree. a year from today, our average house price will be a million 50, maybe flirting with 1.1. And it might even get over a million this year. Yeah. I mean, we have two months left of the year and I wouldn't be surprised yeah. Yeah. actually just with the low inventory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and building costs and the lack of, of land, available yeah. land to build on. And, and you know, yeah. what are we seeing? Some of these lots are selling for, you know, a, a half a lot, you know, a big, big lot, you know, half acre property that was in Lower Mission or Glenmore or, or Black Mountain or what have you. And they've subdivided that lot off. In some cases, the house mm-hmm. was already situated on the side. In others, they've picked the house up, moved it over, put it on a new foundation, sold off the side yard. And that side yard, in some cases, is selling for five, six, seven hundred thousand. In those central urban centers, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For a raw piece of land that you haven't so much as, as you know, put a fence post in. Yeah. Or gone, yeah, gone through the process at all. I mean, average house price or average lot price was a couple months ago was 340, I think. And it's now flirting with 600. Wow. So that's just for the lot. So yeah, predictions. Do, what do we see? You know, I, I guess part of me is it's mixed with prediction and then hope. I hope that we see more come to the market. I hope that yeah. we don't have to have this frenzy because I think that puts a lot of stress on everybody. People mm-hmm. moving in, people already within the community, sellers, it, you know, everybody, it, it has, it has, you know, great effect of everybody sort of feeling frantic. And so I, I hope that there's a little more, I hope that we can continue with what we're seeing right now, which is just a bit calmer where people can make an offer subject to a home inspection and mm-hmm. can, it can ensure that the financing is, is within their means and, yes. and go through that due diligence, which is so important, mm-hmm. but you're right. That's something people haven't been able to do. Mm-hmm. They've They've had to buy subject free yeah. the last few months. And and are we going to continue to see vast numbers of people move here? A hundred percent. It's mm-hmm. and I think the minute, you know, the the travel restrictions, the COVID tests drop and the testing to leave and and all of that and and you, you life know, gets back to normal. Life gets back to normal. I think we're really gonna see, you know, my prediction is we will continue to see Kelowna grow and expand. Mm-hmm. And I think that number that, that, you know, the Colin Bazran, our mayor said that he thought, you know, 50,000 more people here, um, by 2040, I think we'll see 50,000 more people here within six years, certainly within 10, ten years ten for years. sure. Yeah. It's interesting. And I think too, looking at it, you know, I, um, with you, I hope our inventory increases so mm-hmm. that that frenzy can dissipate, but I don't think it will. I really don't yeah. think that we'll get more inventory coming. Um, no. You know, I hope we do. Mm-hmm. So w- time will tell, I guess. But mm-hmm. if you've got further questions about the real estate market, we are always more than happy to answer anytime. So send yeah. us an email, give us a quick phone call. We can have a conversation and just just help give you a sense of what we think and what we're seeing here, you know, on the ground day to day. This is what we do all day and clearly like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Estate for Real People. If you want to reach out to the Stone Sisters, visit www.stonesisters.com. This podcast was produced by Podigy Podcasts. See you next time.